Great. So I want to welcome the students today, the Chair of Individualized and Sculpture, Tara Hattori, um, our guest respondent, Asma Azmi, who's here to um, as our guest artist, and to the four students who are presenting. We're really excited to celebrate their work uh, as, they, as they graduate from CCA. So welcome to the fall 2022 BFA Senior Thesis Conversation Series. My name is Suzanne Cockrell and I'm an individualizing graduate fine art faculty here at CCA. I'm really honored to host this conversation as we celebrate each student's presenting their work today um, and, to present, and to celebrate their dedication to art making during their time at CCA. These students have also been very busy the last couple of days installing their work in the BFA Senior Exhibition that opens tomorrow evening at SOMART's Cultural Center in San Francisco. And I hope you will join us tomorrow in person for the opening. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that information um, in the chat uh, shortly for you. I wanna to begin today uh, reminding us that we are meeting uh, during the last couple of days of Native American Heritage Month. At CCA, we understand land acknowledgement as a transformative act meant to confront our place on native lands and to build mindfulness of our present participation in colonial legacies. As CCA faculty, staff and students, we affirm our responsibility to amplify indigenous voices we stand in solidarity with local indigenous communities and we respect local indigenous protocol. We are learning how to practice land acknowledgement and steward accountable actions at CCA in order to teach and promote greater public consciousness of nat native sovereignty and cultural rights. California College of the Arts campuses are located in Huichen in San Francisco uh, which or Yalamu in San Francisco, uh, respectfully, on the unceded territories of the Chichenyu and Ramatosh Ohlone peoples who have continuously lived upon this land since time immemorial. We recognize the historic discrimination and violence inflicted upon indigenous peoples in California and the Americas, including their forced removal from ancestral lands and the deliberate systematic destruction of their communities and culture. CCA honors indigenous peoples past, present and future here and around the world. And we wish to pay respect to local elders, including those of the lands from which you are joining us virtually today. If you are unsure of those lands you are currently residing upon, we encourage you to visit Native Land CA. So today, welcome to those of you who just joined us. Today, we're celebrating four individualized program seniors, Aaron Chan, Quinn Didion, Asia Garcia, and Robert Fredenberg. Each student today will give a 10 minute presentation introducing their work. After each presentation, our respondents will have a 10 minute conversation with the student, providing feedback and asking them questions. Please note that we won't have time in this event for public question and answers, but we will encourage attendees to drop comments and affirmations for the seniors in the Zoom chat. The chat transcript will be saved at the end of the event and will be sent to the seniors as, as a sort of virtual guest book. We recommend you keep your mic muted during the event. So before we get started, I wanna quickly introduce our guest respondents and artists here today. I wanna to welcome Asma Kazmi, who is a research-based artist who combines virtual and material objects to accept to explore simultaneity, a tug of more than one time and place. Her work involves long-term engagement with cities, architecture, plants, animals, stones, and other matter to locate vestiges of relations forged by the legacies of colonialism and post-colonial context. Kazmi was born in Keta, a city in Pakistan near the border with Af Afghanistan. She works between the US, India, Pakistan, China, Europe, and the Middle East to create installations that are legible in various cultural contexts. Kazmi is currently an assistant professor in the Department of Art and Practice and the Berkeley Center for New Media at UC Berkeley. Thank you for joining us. 
and Taro Hattori, who is our currently the chair of individualized and the sculpture programs here at CCA is an interdisciplinary installation and social practice artist, which often focuses on building a relationship between physical settings and the people with a specific sociopolitical background through their performances, conversations, and singing. All right, I think we're ready to go. Thank you everyone for being here. Our first um, presenter is Erin Chan. Erin, if you're, you are welcome to share your screen and get started whenever you're ready. Okie dokie. Okay. I will start. Um, hi, my name is Erin Chan. Um, I'm an individualized major with an ecological practices minor. Um, as a Chinese American, I find myself often sitting at the intersection of identities and being able to connect to a span of viewpoints. I was an arts and crafts kid growing up and I was always making. When I discovered baking in middle school, I fell in love and became a dec cake decorator, which is my job all through high school. Food is my love, but I also care about design and how it influences every aspect of our lives. I came to CCA for industrial design in fall 2018, and I was interested in creating a more sustainable world through design of everyday objects. I eventually switched to individualized major because I wanted to investigate local and global food systems through design thinking rather than focusing on consumer product. I wanted to share some of my influences as um, that's a very big part of my work um, is research driven and collecting information, especially learning from food writers and journalists, both written and audio. So the first one is uh, before I came to CCA, I learned about Charles and Ray Eames, who are interdisciplinary thinkers and creators. They are known for their furniture, but did so much more, including making movies, exhibitions, and in popular culture were known as industrial designers. And they shaped my early understanding of the practice of ID and part of the reason why I wanted to go to art school. Um, the second piece is the event that changed my perspective and influenced me to switch to individualize was seeing the Victoria and Albert Museum's 2019 exhibition, Food Bigger Than the Plate. The work in the exhibition showed me that food and design could come together both socially and systematically rather than just a commercial design product perspective. And then my third most recent inspiration is the Nat Ministry created by Trisha Hersey is an organization that focuses on examining the liberating power of naps and rest. Additionally, I took a class with Shalini Agwala, Agwal called uh, Radical Redesign, wherein we looked at the need and importance of care and rest as a key element in how we think about the world and design. So this is the basis of my senior thesis, which I will talk about in a bit. So in this presentation, I'm gonna show some of the highlights of my time at CCA and the projects that helped transform my thinking. So the first one is Transparent Emotions, um, is a work that I made during my first semester at CCA. Um, one of the reasons why I chose to go here was because of the glass program. I had attended glass blowing camp as a teen and really was excited about that material and making in that method. Throughout the first semester, I would go into the studio to blow glass during open hours to practice. I ended up with this collection of imperfect cups. And as I always wanted to make things that were useful or objects that were also playful, I sandblasted faces onto the surface. Moving and coming to CCA was such a transformative time that I wanted to express the different emotions that I felt in the first semester in college. So during my first year, um, this was my second semester, I was very absorbed in making physical objects. I had access to studios and lots of energy and motivation to do so. I made this table in an intro to furniture class with Adrian Siegel. I was very influenced by mid-century design and the Eameses. When I look at this work, I think about the whole process it took to create it and the joy I felt in that process, conceptualizing collecting materials to being in the shop nonstop and learning different tools to craft with my hands. And this led me to my second year and my first year in ID. And I realized that this was the wrong direction I wanted to pursue. Um, this project was called Agrid. Um, it is a in indoor compost collector I designed. Um, I personally didn't really care about making another product for the elite. However, the prompt was to make a, another houseware object. Um, but in this process, I realized that designing a product many times uh, cover, covers up a larger social or environmental issue. 
which is really what really needs to be addressed. And I found that I wanted to focus on uh, ecological issues and awareness and systems that we have created and ways to improve those. So I think my goal with this was um, to make composting more accessible, but it wasn't really uh, successful as um, it wasn't about the system, more about the product. It wasn't going to achieve the context that I wanted it to achieve. So right before the pandemic started, I decided I needed to take a semester off, um, feeling the pressure of the ID program pushing me in a direction I didn't want to go. I came back to CCA to finish as an individualized major, offering me flexibility. And one of the first classes I took after coming back was bio design with Mike Bogan and Linda Gross, which was highly directive for me as it showed me that I truly care about design and creating, but it needed to be ecological focused. Um, mold and bacteria typically are seen as something to avoid, but I found a particular interest in them as I cultivated paintings with them on agar, which was um, also stimulated my growth and interest in mushrooms and the role of mold and bacteria in food. So as part of this class, I created a project called Farm to Table Becomes Table as Farm and started as an, a series of experiments in figuring out the possibility of growing microgreens on agar plates. I started thinking about how we could eat where our food is grown, but in an urban context. Initially, the reaction sort of saw this as a luxury dining experience. However, I was interested in making fresh food more accessible. I know a idea that a lot of people are looking into at the moment. For me and my experience in school cafeterias that were sterile and uninviting, I imagined how this would take shape in a social context. So looking to add warmth and growth into a space for learning. Um, my next project was Ecodyn, and this allowed me to explore systems through interaction design perspective and allowed me to cross disciplines again. I wanted to highlight this experience in particular because it was the first time I participated in a group project that was successful and felt really good. I realized I liked working with people who had a same um, motivation and uh, with motivation. And because I didn't have to have all the skills myself, I could bring my best skills, like the deep knowledge of food waste, uh, big picture thinking and making connections between ideas and disciplines. But working with others made it made it so that I could make something greater happen and bouncing ideas off of one another in a team meant that I couldn't get in my own way. Working with more people created more space for myself. So once in-person classes started happening again in fall 2021, I found textiles department. This is what I was waiting for. Um, textiles connected me once again to a medium that was a usable object, but I could use cotton, made me feel less guilty as I had crude and anxiety, anxiety around environmental impact of materials. Though like I understand that there are contamination issues in other parts of the cotton process. However, anxiety didn't get in my way this time. Woven bread uses baker's twine as the weft on the TC2, which is a digital jacquard loom merging physical and digital manipulation. Um, I started off printing off uh, images of a ad for Wonder Bread from the 60s and handmade baguette and weaving those two images together th with paper and then digitizing them to be woven on the jacquard loom. The distortion of the two was my own thinking about what bread is. Um, baguette is a staple food made of flour, water, and salt, whereas Wonder Bread is a product and a marketing machine. So this leads into um, the bed bread. Um, after learning some weaving, I wanted to continue exploring textiles and I found felting. I, Being perpetually exhausted from a combo of the pandemic and being in an intense school environment, I felt burnt out and over from overthinking and the daily pressures. Um, so I struggled in creating. Drawing references from food uh, through felting was comforting and warming and approachable in the midst of the pressure of to make a senior project. I didn't overthink it and it involved a lot of intuition and joy and had me asking questions such as how do I embody the care and rest I believe in while working through the effects of internalized capitalism, valuing speed, efficiency, and focusing on output tied to self-worth? And how could I visualize the care and act of self-care that I needed? This leads to my senior project that I just put up, the practice of making bread with sourdough starter takes time, patience, time, and is very much about the process and experience. It means slowing down to the speed of nature 
and being very physically active in the process. For me, baking is uh, the most restful act as I am fully present in the moment, not focused on the past or future, but attending to the moment and task at hand. I have always loved the practice of making food as it's physical, but fleeting as it is eaten and composted back into the earth. The crackers I've made with sourdough are a reminder you can only take one bite at a time and in life one day at a time. Uh, so what's next? Um, the exhibition, as Sam said, is tomorrow and you should come see it if you're in town. Um, I will be making crackers and you can come enjoy them. I will be moving to Seattle at the end of this year and in continuing with the ideas of exploring needing rest, I plan to focus on my health and well-being and integrating myself back into my local food community like the farmer's market and small businesses like Book Larder, as well as doing a little bit of travel. And I wanted to thank you all for listening and for friends and family for coming. Thank you to Suzanne for respondents for being here. I wanted to take a very special thank you for some people at CCA that really helped me through this ride. Mara Holtzgove, Shalini Agrawal, the textiles department and the glass department made me feel uh, welcome as well as some close friends, Alex, Caitlin, and Molly. And lastly, my parents and my little bunny, Theodore. This is where you can find me occasionally. Awesome, Erin. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so we can just jump right in uh, with 10 minutes. of, And you were like, you got that 10 minutes down, Erin. That was amazing. <laughs> so go ahead. Let's have a conversation. So um, I will start. Um, thank you so much, Erin. That was um, really lovely to to see, and I want to congratulate you on graduation, but also um, on putting together a presentation that was really effective. Um, you know, I, I loved following your journey, and it was actually really helpful um, to know, you know, where you began um, as as a baker um, and into um, the the work that you're doing now. And so, um, again, that was a really a productive presentation of your work. Um, so um, uh, that was great. Um, I was um, I was really moved by the 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 range of materials that you have used um, in in your processes. And you know, I was actually thinking about like what what kind of processes are not um, utilized by Aaron? You know, it seems like you're um, you're um, you're picking up um, new ideas and really um, in engaging with that process and um, um, getting to a level of craft that um, is really um, uh, productive. And within that, the conceptual um, aspects of your work um, are are really strong. And um, you know, I'm really curious about. Um, about about where the work will go because you're you're touching upon themes um, you know again of of craft making things really well but also um, ideas of um, uh, consumerism and commercial production uh, mass production of objects and um, ideas um, you know there's an aspect of control in your work um, which um, I really appreciate but then there are the bacteria paintings where you know where you're giving up control completely um, and allowing the bacteria to become authors in a way um, so I, I really enjoyed that and you know that that uh, push and pull between um, um, honing design and ideas and then letting the material, um, do what it's going to do um, and have a kind of agency. Um, I think that push and pull is really productive. Um, and um, so, you know, that's something I think you should hold on to. Um, I also really appreciate um, the idea of rest and, um, you know, as a kind of resistance. And I was thinking about, um, and I guess this would be my question to you. Um, I was thinking about, um, about your research process, but also, um, you know, your your making, um, and um, you know, is is um, it, it does does craft or does um, thinking through um, ideas? Is there is there um, 
an aspect of sort of cultivating a sense of calm and well-being um, within that process? I mean, can you can you imagine, um, you know, in, in your future, the practice being uh, one that can actually allow for um, the cultivation of health and well-being that you um, that you're seeking, which I think is really smart. Um, but yeah, it, it, it can can those be tied together? Yeah. Oh, I totally think so. I think I also see, seek out research to find sort of um, clarity and some sort of like grounding point too. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think so because um, a lot of what I'm looking at is how can we make each other better and ourselves. So thank you for that. Yeah, of course. Can I start asking questions? Yeah. Uh, um, this, yeah, Erin, thank you so much for your presentation. This is all a really emotional moment for me, actually. You know, you came into my first year pro, uh, class also, which was totally before the pandemic, and uh, you took a leave of absence, and then, uh, you know, and then, um, yeah, what we went through the COVID time, and um, but you have been making amazing things and you are you have been true to yourself what you believe in and um you know kind of uh, your your mental condition health conditions and also everybody's kind of like a health of uh, community too and then you uh, express um that aspect through baking and making and also uh yeah especially for the uh I don't know, this is the farm to table, table to farm. What uh, I forgot if that was before the pandemic or not, but the um that was also the uh, almost like a beginning of um, you know, the your concept methodology uh in place. And then I was really, I remember I still remember I was so impressed by that project when I saw it. Um uh, and um yeah, so thank you so much. And um I I rather it's not actually a question I have in my mind. I really want you to teach us, like um, you know the the effect, negative and also possibly like uh, positive or I don't know what whatever, but the effect of the uh, the the pandemic that we uh, um, we have today because we went through such a, a hard time. It's still still going through the hard time. And then I started baking actually sour uh, sourdough also during the pandemic. And then it gave me many, many questions, you know, how we live with nature, how we live with germs, you know, COVID is also one of them. And um, so I really want you to teach us like a how you experienced this COVID time and then what was the uh, impact that you had and then how we how we actually you know utilize what we learned through this experience in the future because you're going to new uh seattle and then uh try to get connected with the community so you know what what do you have like what what other things you learned during the period during the pandemic? Yeah, I think so. And um, yeah. yeah, I feel like there's a lot of different things, but one thing was, and I think I talk about this in my artist statement that I put up, but um, the idea that I didn't need to uh, push myself as far as I did, like pressure on myself personally, um, and having less pressure on myself and being kinder to myself um, because so much is happening in our world um, at all times um, and anything can happen. And so I think being kinder to myself and other people, I think was a big part of that. Um, yeah. That's great. I mean, there's a lot of things and I'll probably think of a million things after we end this call but okay. uh, that's part of it. Um, connecting with a community of people. A lot of the community I built in Seattle was through the pandemic and the food mm. community. And it was through working together at the farmer's market to keep everyone safe um, and distanced and um, supporting one another. So 
Mm. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Aaron, I had, a, I had a one quick comment just following up on what Tara said is I've just really appreciated how your practice has continued to evolve in relationship to your, you know, your personal experience, you know, and how that's also brought woven, you know, a very, um, you know, responsive attention to ecology and to social critique as well. And I think that that as we build in a long term view of being artists and makers and creative thinkers mm -hmm. over time, I think responding to our own deep experiences is part of what we do, you know, and I think you've done that in a really interesting way, both conceptually and making with a kind of priority around your own self care. And I think that's how we learn to make changes in society by actually making them in our own lives. So it's one important way. So congratulations. It was great to get to know you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any last quick comment before we move on? Thank you all. I, may I just add um, one more thing? Yes, um, yes, we have time. Okay, great. So, um, you know, I, I appreciated what, what what Tara was saying about teaching us. And, you know, another thing that I was thinking about, Erin, and, you know, it's hard to sort of really see the work on Zoom. Yeah. Um, but, but I, you know, I was thinking your work um, really teaches us um, about materials and processes and craft um, and their journeys, um, you know, where things come from. Um, and um, and so I was, you know, I was imagining maybe, um, uh, you know, that that aspect of your work, perhaps you could even hone more um, and and be um, really context specific, um, so that you can really, um, um, you know, it, it's an opportunity for you to learn about, and then for us to learn through your um, knowledge. Um, you know where things are are coming from. You know what are the um, what are the cultural influences of baking? You know in Europe. Um, you know where where are they originating? Um, and um, how are cultures uh, talking and interacting with each other through the movement of materials and um, and processes? Um, so, you know, I, I, I feel like that's um, in, in, in your work, that's, that's one thing that you could really highlight um, and, and make really specific. Yeah, I wrote that down so I can think about that because that definitely sparks an interest. So thank you. Yeah, great comment. Okay, thank you, Erin, so much. So we're going to move now to, let's have a round of applause, maybe for Aaron. Silent applause. We'll unmute at the end and we'll applause everyone. Um, okay, so Quinn. All right. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, take it away. Perfect. All right. My name is Quinn Didion. I am an individualized major and I am an ecological practices minor. Uh, when I was born and raised in Washington state where I often found myself surrounded by nature, especially growing up while living in the woods. In fact, like one of my first memories was camping out by the Columbia River. Animals have also been a really part, a really large part of my life growing up. Um, I grew up having animals in my house. My family has always had a really close relationship with animals, having several pets of our own and even fostering cats at one point. I also grew up riding horses for a few years of my life where I learned to work more with animals and care for them. In fact, I when I began drawing as a kid, I almost exclusively only drew animals and animals continue to play a large part of my artist artistic practice. Art has always been an important part of my life and family. My great grandmother was a painter. My father was a glass artist and painter and my brother is a musician. The piece on the left is actually a painting that my dad had done while he was in high school. Um, although we all work in different art forms and mediums, it's always exciting and inspiring to have my family create and be continuously interested in art. Um, let's see. 
I've always been create. I've always been inspired by play through art and also exploring and experimenting with art and looking for new routes to explore with my work. One of my biggest influences is an artist named Julian Myhall. Julian Myholix is an artist located in London, Ontario. I had discovered him through social media and his work introduced me to ceramics, particularly the ability to combine illustration and ceramics together. He greatly inspired me to pursue my own path in ceramics as being able to see someone with a similar skill set transfer that into a new medium opened a new window for me. I was drawn to his work by the way he works and incorporates animals into his work, as well as his color palette and intricate designs he decorates his ceramic work with. I've also always been inspired by the natural world, and I continue to be so throughout my life. From animals to plants to paleontology and taxidermy and science, my interests have always ranged greatly. I am always looking to learn more about the world around us and get out into nature whenever I can. I find myself often reading books about ecosystems and plants and animals, trying to understand the world and deepen my own relationship with nature. I particularly like learning about the ecosystems of the Pacific Northwest where I grew up, bringing these influences into my art whenever I can. I came to CCA to study animation. I loved visual storytelling and exploring the narrative form. But during my time in the animation program, I found myself falling out of love with the industry. And in return, it affected my relationship with the medium. This wasn't the career I wanted to pursue as it was limiting my work and creativity. Festivities is a story from the end of my time in the animation program when I was trying to understand how I wanted to move forward with my practice at CCA. After I left the animation program, I began to focus on my illustration work. I wanted to explore storytelling with more non-literal and metaphoric visuals. Lover Boy is a cassette mixtape where the songs I had chosen reminded me of home, both a home within myself and songs that make me feel like I am home. It's a mixtape I had designed to introduce to myself to others and was about connecting with others through music. I was eager to begin working with clay, but due to the pandemic, I was only able to begin working with the medium in the fall of 2021, when we had returned to campus after lockdown. The Beast offering was one of the first ceramic pieces that I had done, where I experimented with clay and what and the capacities to do, do as I was beginning to find my footing in the world of ceramics. In Spectacle, I aimed to experiment with working with illustration and collage using what I had available on me in my workspace. It was a personal challenge of working with permanence, my goal being to not, any, to not erase any part of the piece, but rather continue to add onto it and work forward. I've always struggled with perfectionism in my work, and this gave me the opportunity to relieve myself of the pressure of making things perfect. As I have become to feel more comfortable with working with ceramics, I have begun to experiment with ceramics and what I can do. Mooncrawler is an example of the work I have been doing which centers around using the skills I have already developed and pushing myself further. The illustrative part of the vase was done by removing the, from, removing the glaze from those areas to reveal the natural clay color beneath, something I have never tried before and decided to do in the spur of a moment. Moving forward, I plan to pursue tattooing and I will be looking for a tattoo, tattoo apprenticeship at a studio. 
I want to work with people and art and making the body a home and connect with others over this and help others feel comfortable in their own bodies. I will also continue my to work uh, on my own personal art practice and continuing with creating more ceramic pieces. Moving forward in my personal work, I will continue to explore themes of queerness and finding euphoria in identity. Thank you so much for coming to my talk. It's been a very challenging four and a half years at CCA, but I'm very excited for where the future brings me and where my art goes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Quinn. That was great. Um, thank you, Quinn. Um, really great to see your work too, and um, also um, a really good presentation. Um, uh, it, it was really helpful to follow your journey um, and, um, you know, to understand that the forms and um, 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 illustrations that you're creating um, really are called from the background um, where you grew up um, in Washington state from nature. Um, and I really appreciated the, the images um, um, that you put together um, of your family's work, but also things that inspire you. Um, so, um, yeah, I um, I'm really interested in 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 how you use illustration. Um, you know, it's it's used as a way to um, it. Um, you know, when I think about illustration, I think about something that um, is is fairly traditional. It's um, um, happens on a two-dimensional surface. Um, it's um, 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 you know um, images that that um, um, are, are certainly innovative. But what you're doing with them um, is um, is is really um, unique because you're often applying them to a three-dimensional object. Um, you know, and I, I thought the last image that you showed of the tattoo on the ceramic form. Um, was was really a good um, um, you know additional example of your interest in applying um, these these beautiful animal forms that you invent um, and perhaps um, also borrow from you know other things that you might have seen um, and then you you find um, you know a mixtape or um, a ceramic object um, to to use as um, you know the surface that the images uh, get applied to. So again, I, I'm interested in that. You know what 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 form or vessel becomes the container for these stories that you're that you're telling. Um, and um, again, this the the um, the animal forms and the plant forms are um, are they're beautiful. Um, and uh, you know, and, and very curious. Um, I, 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 I am constantly sort of looking at them and thinking that um, I've seen them before somewhere. Um, you know, and 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 um, in a in a really productive way, they're reminding me of things I've seen in museums. Um, you know, belonging to different cultures. Uh, but then, what you're doing with them is um, is is um, very contemporary. So. Um, uh, yeah, so, you know, I just want to say that um, I also appreciate that, um, you know, you understand what future holds for you, you um, are, um, you know, I, I appreciate that you want to continue your practice as well as um, uh, think of tattoo um, as a different art form. Um, and I, you know, I'm wondering if you see those as like, two separate paths, the, the art making is separate from um, the, the tattoo work, or is there a way in which those two um, kinds of um, making um, uh, images can uh, collide and, and coexist? And, you know, can tattoos be your art um, or do you see them separately? Yeah, definitely. I definitely think I see them. I see them as individual, but I also see them both as artistic, like parts of my practice. Hey, uh, thank you so much, Quinn. It's amazing to see 
you know, all the variety of work you created, which actually all of which has a common thread for me. Um, and um, also the, it's great to know that you're from Washington State. You know, it's an amazing place. And I was always thinking about Washington State. Um, actually, California is the future of Washington State, but I started thinking about Washington State is the future of California, actually. <laughs> oh, but they, we, don't, we don't have much rain going on, so that's why it's not going to be the same, of course. But um, I think that nature, that environment gave you the um the foundation of your work and um but also your illustration work um what you know like responding to what asma said also the uh your illustration is um almost like a um symbolic language for me you know it's not really just the uh stereotypical like um um, traditional illustration. It's so much language going on. Uh, one of which I have been uh, really kind of like interested in knowing more about, which is the kind of this mythic quality. And um, so your creatures seems to be kind of mythical creatures. And also um, that the god, the moors that's in the uh, um, festivities, even though that's, that's the uh, work that you... Um, got out of the animation program with but still almost that work represents what you kind of started pursuing in the future or the in uh after uh years in after that um the time you got out of the, the program so um i you know that last scene of the festivities was really really you know amazing that's you know that the moors came out and then so that mythic, mythical quality is really a wonderful aspect. And then the last moment you started talking about you want to pursue the queerness um, uh, in your work. Uh, so I, I've been, I, I'm wondering, you know, this uh, mythic quality, especially uh, those uh, creatures and which seems to be the, mixture of uh many things like you know the the over time like it, it's it looks really uh from the um very old times but it has the contemporary aspect too and it had and also the idea of tattooing too uh i can't help thinking about this idea of uh becoming uh that Jill Deleuze uh, proposed, you know, if you're if you graduate from in 90s or 80s, like everybody talks about Deleuze, so I'm from that age. So, you know, this idea of becoming coming to my mind when I see your work all the time. So, um, yeah. So this queerness and also this mythical creatures. How how do you see the relationship between them? It, it seems to be that's one thing, and um, for you, and then that's the process of uh, like clarifying identification of yourself you know identifying yourself right so i don't know uh so i want to know more about it how does it work yeah i definitely think like queerness and like the mythical for me they definitely are very like intertwined i feel like queerness and like especially the euphoria around that it's about like not being able to be kept in a box or being being more than what we know and being something to be explored and i think just queerness in itself is very mythical and i think i've always like enjoyed exploring like the mythical and whatnot through like queerness and through nature and just kind of like pushing what i can and seeing where things can go mm -hmm. So what, what is the, the, the future project you have in your mind at this moment? Um, right now, I think on my mind, I definitely want to, I want to work on definitely getting like, um, work on some more ceramic pieces. I definitely mm. want to pursue doing more sculpture work with that for sure. Nice, nice. I, lo I love that animal piece that's kind of like a, has those stick sticking out. You know, we carried that piece like yesterday together. <laughs> that was quite heavy. And, but also it was a kind of like a weirdly soft in a way. Uh, yeah, that kind of mythical quality is there. And then even though that's weird design of it, and but still that softness is something that, you know, your work always has too. So I, which I love so much. 
So, yeah. Thank you. Um, Quinn, I just wanted to mention, in case you miss it, um, I put um, a link in the chat for you. Um, a, a local trans artist, Nikki Green. I don't know mm. if you know her work, okay. um, but she creates um, these really beautiful, large ceramic pieces, which um, she thinks of as ritual objects. Um, and, uh, you know, they're really heavily ornamented and decorated. Um, 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 on 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 the surface of the vessel or whatever form that she uh, she creates. So I think you would really enjoy that that body Thank of work. Thank you. Uh, and Quinn, I also put Zach Osma's work in there for you. I think I've mentioned them to you before. Um, and I I've just struck. I've gotten to see your presentation several times, but there's something also about the body. You know, the body mm. and your and how the body is also very present in your work and um and I'm just excited for you to continue to th I mean when you're tattooing you know creating tattoos on people's bodies you know like there's a way that you sort of there's the context of your work I guess is really what I'm pointing to the body and also the context that mixtape how that goes out into the you know, into these other kind of worlds, right? That your work is sort of pointing to and encountering and, and engaging and just keep thinking about in context, you know, and where you what your work is doing in the world, you know, and what other worlds it wants to touch through its playfulness and research. All right, thank you. All right, folks, I think that was, um, thank you so much, Quinn. That was fantastic as well. And we are gonna move on to our third presenter today. We have Asia, who's gonna present next. You ready to go? Hi. Um, yeah, so I was just gonna present my screen really quick. Uh, Great. See if this works. All right. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Um, hello, my name is uh, Asia Garcia. I'm located in Oakland, California, although I am originally from New Mexico. Uh, and I'm an individualized major here at CCA, specializing in animation, painting, and sculpture. I've uh, been interested in art for my entire life uh, as it assisted me in having an outlet during times where it was really hard for me to understand my own emotions as well as like the world around me. And this piece right here, uh, I, I made this piece when I was in th around third grade. Um, so I wanted to just show that to show that I've always kind of been a more artistic type. And my mother, she wanted me to add the photo uh, that I included. And um, because that photo right there is uh, my brother and I had a pumpkin patch and uh, I chose the green pumpkin rather than the orange one. So like in her eyes, I was always like a little bit different. And uh, this photo just kind of like solidifies that, I guess. And um, my inspiration has typically been um, famous illustrators and painters. I'm often drawn to those that look past the veil of typical reality, see the activity between the lines. This may present itself as uh, recognizing the complex arrays of colors within a seemingly flat color, such as the complex work of Wayne Thibault, or understanding the in-between type movement within something as simple as a dog walking. Uh, something that futurist artist Giacomo uh, Baia represented in their work, Dynamism of Dog on a Leaf. And um, over on the far right, uh, also known as, or Al Hirschfeld, also known as the King of Line, was a caricature artist known for being able to capture people's likeness with very few lines. And I admire the ability to take a single line of action and turn it into a, an entire piece such as the piece I just showed here, uh, where there's one long continuous line throughout the whole piece. 
Um, reflection is a, a common piece of imagery within my work. The idea of being able to simply like perceive yourself is fascinating to me, especially as you age, evolve, and in my case, transition, you find yourself looking at your reflection and having your brain catch up to your current visible state. With this piece, I approached it in a composition I found often on comic book covers. Uh, it's dynamic and off-center, and so therefore it's narrative. And I spent a lot of time reflecting on myself, or I spent a lot of time reflecting on myself. It's very bittersweet as I find myself changing quickly, but I also hold myself to impossible standards. There's many mixed feelings, so colors that complement each other while also being complementary. And I needed to create this work in order to ground myself again on the fact that I exist and therefore I matter. If I can see my reflection, that is undoubtable proof that I am in front of whatever it is that is reflecting. And in this work, uh, two goths, one prep, I wanted to experiment with shape, silhouette, color, and facial expressions. And though this work is digital, I will exhibit it uh, physically on my wall um, during the exhibition. And I drew this because uh, it's nice seeing people who express themselves in similar ways as I do. In this case, I wanted to portray, pe portray people who are visibly queer and have piercings and wear black. Magnolia is my rabbit and muse. Whenever I see her, I could just see all the colors in, in the rainbow in her coat. And it inspired me to start an ongoing series where I paint her and I try to capture what she looks like without using just black and white. And The Trial of James McCree is a film created uh, for my senior thesis. I would like to exhibit it through a 36 inch TV as a centerpiece of my show. Uh, uh, tomorrow, come on. Uh, I would also like to provide some of the concept art I made throughout my journey with it, which I'll also show. Uh, this work connects my current projects as I would like to continue pursuing animation. I wanted to show this piece as something that shows my strengths. And I'd like to watch a little bit of that right now, if, if you'd be so kind, if it'll let me. Um, I may have messed this up. I apologize. I thought I got this covered. Um, all right. That didn't work out. Maybe we could try again. Asia, if you'd like, you can try one more time or we can just move forward with the presentation. Okay, yeah, thank you. Have you have a second. I think I got it. There it is, I think. Yeah. yeah. The lady is asking for your name, kid. Show some respect. <laughs> James McCree. Buzz, 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 buzz. Buzz, 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 buzz. Now, kid, I'm gonna level with you here. 
You look like a smart, respectable, whatever you are. So there's no use lying to you here. You're in a real sticky situation. It is a big no-no around here to go around touching random doors. But don't you worry. You have the best cricket in the business representing you. Your Honors, with all due respect, it is obvious that there has been a clear misunderstanding. My client here... <gasps> Quite boring. Clearly it's guilty. Look at it. It reeks of human. I suggest we simply kill it on the spot. I didn't mean any disrespect, your honors. Buzz, buzz. Very well. But, if you're in any way lying... Or boring! Or boring, I will not hesitate to eat you. <sighs> your honors, please! God's sake among man, I have seen the unspeakable. What do you want about? There's been a murder, an execution, at the Capitol. <laughs> oh! That sounds very interesting. Hmm, yes, that does sound interesting. Buzz, 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 buzz. From the Capitol? You are hereby declared guilty and sentenced to oh. exile, never to return to our world, for you are now banished. Now take him away. What? You wouldn't meet me like that, would you? So that was my film. Playing it. And um, so my film had gone through many stages of development over the year long process. It was a hard thesis to complete, but it was very satisfying being able to finish a film. Uh, though it wasn't as complete as I would have liked it, I have lots of concept art for this project. Many things are colored and have lots of exploration within each character. And uh, I hope one day I can go back and complete it. And Willing Hands is the second centerpiece of my exhibition. It's dedicated to finding complexities in colors. I wanted to have an even and balanced composition paired with a black background to exemplify the color exploration of the piece itself. It's a self portrait I created in a time of stress like I stated before, I tend to create my work as a method of processing the feelings I have. Death is often on my mind, and I wanted to explore the idea and, and my own relationship with it through a painting. Uh, the method of willing hands is a therapeutic uh, method of acceptance. Pairing the idea of self-portraiture, death, and willing hands, I am attempting to communicate with the audience my own journey of accepting mortality, loss, and the passage of time. This work connects with my current projects as I place each individual color to give the illusion of depth and wholeness. And my plans after graduation are to pursue residencies and continue to network and get to know people. I wanna learn about people, culture, and history. And I would love for my work to evolve with the times and with who I am. I would, like to main, I would like to continue pursuing animation and I would like to gradually build a portfolio and maintain an independent status. And I plan on expanding upon a concept I have been working on for a very long time. Alien Guy is just a small animation I'd like to expand upon, uh, including uh, adding a story behind it. 
And thank you all for attending my big speech today. It's been a very tough four years and I feel very mixed about a uh, starting chapter. Thank you. Thank you so much, Asia, for that really, really wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Asia. I, um, you know, I, I have to say that um, your faculty has really trained you all really well because I'm seeing these really beautiful presentations um, that give so much information about who you are as an artist. And so um, again, congratulations on, um, on, on having a really good presentation. Um, you know, when I looked at your work, I was thinking um, about these two, um, you know, that these two directions that your work is sort of going in and, and how they're really um, in a productive way interrelated. So, you know, there's the painting work, um, which you use the word uh, dynamic, off-centered, um, with um, a really vibrant uh, color palette. Um, and then there's the animation work, which um, retains some of the humor um, of your painted work and, and um, the dynamism um, in the composition, but also in your use of, um, you know, sound and, and storytelling, um, the, the, the language. Um, but, but there's something um, um, that, that's much more minimal. Um, you know, in the animation. Um, so it's sort of, um, I'm interested in that contrast. Um, the, and I think it might be just, um, um, a, 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 you know, product of um, animation being um, perhaps something new to you. It sounds like you've been doing it for a semester now. Is that right? No, not even? No, was, I've been um, in animations uh, since I started SEC. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. That, uh, that, okay. But I guess what I'm wondering about is, um, you know, the, uh, the, the kind of um, spaces and environments that you're creating in the paintings. Um, is there, um, is, is there, um, um, you know, is there space within the animation for, for those kinds of complex psychological spaces to be created? Um, or do you think, um, you know, the, the, do, do you think that um, the animation work needs to do something else? Um, yeah, I'd like to like really combine a lot of my concepts, um, especially like from my paintings into like my animations. I think it's easy, much easier for me right now to be able to capture something in just like, like a big concept in just one um, frame that's a painting rather than like a time-based um, with a script or like overall, like a lot of things, a lot of different things happening. But I definitely hope to um, be able to retain like enough skill to where I can combine them both. Right, and, and maybe that's the, um, you know, graduation provides an opportunity for you to maybe work on projects a little bit longer, um, you know, cause we're so bound by, um, uh, semester deadline. So perhaps that's an opportunity for you to, um, to, to, to take advantage of. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adrian. Um, this is, this is really, uh, this was amazing. Um, you know, I could see how you had developed, uh, many things that you started in my early class, like I think that was yeah, even like before the pandemic again. But um, yeah, uh, I I'm still feeling really so impressed by this. Um, okay, I think three things uh, especially. Uh, the major thing was this this uh, trial of James McCree. Um, oh, amazing story, and it's really. In a way, it's so you, and because you have always this kind of like a very humor, uh, uh, funny uh, description of cruelty. So um, kind of like the, the reflecting the how cruel the society can be, and then also how 
they misunderstand us, but the things keep going. And then, um, yeah, it's such a kind of, you know, the, your depiction of cruelty is um, really unique and amazing and funny. And, and, you know, I turned off my microphone, but the, uh, I was laughing so much because, um, and then, but the, the, the level of cruel, cruelty is not, you know, sometimes even laughable, you know, it's really, uh, you know, that's how... <laughs> <laughs> the punishment came to you, right? But the, yeah, I'm glad that the James McCree could come back to the the um, but the being traumatized, but the, came came back to the real world. That's that's great. Um, and the, the animation, as uh, uh, Asma said, the this one direction animation and the other direction, those two works, especially reflection and also the the willing hands. The reflection was so so captivating you know i think that everybody has that moment that you know looking to yourself but the you know you're amazed by you know the the image that you're looking at and then uh or really uh confused by it <laughs> and so um and uh and also the when you're explaining this the work reflection i started seeing how you are actually has this, so much ability to handle languages and then i, I maybe miss i my my misun, uh, misunderstanding but the, you said some something's off center that's why narrative so something's off center that you know basically caused the narrative right so it's amazing when you said uh said that that was uh really uh interesting um um so uh your the way you use languages seems to have something so you have the you have you know you are amazingly talented in so many different fields but the, you're talented in languages too i think and um willing hands was also great so those work like a reflection the paintings reflection and uh, and willing hands are almost like a cr crystallizing the the narrative behind it rather than you know animation work which is really time based and then you basically use your uh, humor and to create this uh, story so um i'm you know i can't form a question actually at this moment because you know i was so amazed by how much you're talented for many di uh, uh, directions but yeah what's your future direction or future work do you want to con uh, continue or the uh um uh finish this uh james mccree in a more finished form or the and then maybe market that to some kind of like a, you know the industry at, or which direction do you want to go uh yeah like i'd like to finish james mccree someday like um i have like a lot of notes i've gotten some critiques from like like classmates of mine Mm -hmm. But um, I just don't really have access to my original files. So I hope one day I can be able to like uh, edit it perfectly and then like be able to color it and even animate it more. Um, and I'd like to like, uh, I'd like to primarily just keep like learning about things, whether that's like about like culture or history or like myself. Um, because like, I think that really impacts a lot of like the, the, the maturity of my work uh, or, or even the immaturity too. Like uh, it, I think like just a lot of like knowledge about general things like helps me like um, find like a ground basis of what to work with, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does definitely. Are you also interested in like working with people because they, you know, you have been doing so many things and you're really good at several, you know, certain things. So by working with other people, probably you can, you know, complete such a gigantic project, uh, you know, in a much, you know, more sophisticated level. I think I don't know, but how 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 you try to work with people? That's true. Um, I guess like I've thought about like um, maintaining a more like independent status uh -huh, uh, in right. terms of the animation mm -hmm. but um but I that's I like that idea of like possibly like bringing somebody in to help like uh to help finish one of my projects or something mm -hmm. um 
-hmm. I think I might like probably pursue that if anything, rather than join like a, an animation studio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. <laughs> the last thing is was the when when I saw the picture of you holding the green pumpkin, I was laughing so much. <laughs> that was so funny. And then you know I was like that too. I definitely chose something different from some other people are holding. And so uh yeah, uh, it's totally Asia. You you are so unique. And thank you so much for being uh, part of our community. And then um, yeah, it was great. We have been working together. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Asia. That was wonderful. I, you know, I just seeing your work over this semester, I'll just make this really quickly, but just felt the generosity in your work, like how much you actually shared your vulnerability your, from that first image to the, the last image. And um, just really, um, just really appreciate that. Um, and the idea and the, your attention to detail you know, I think as a storyteller was just so, was so poignant and, and um, punctuate the set, the way the sound punctuated your story. You know, you just take, you have a really, a really lovely style and aesthetic that's full of humor and, and, and vulnerability. So I look forward to seeing what you do next. And that last image, that last gift is really, I'm so excited to see where that might go. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we're gonna transition. Thank you. Um, thank you again. And we are gonna transition to our last presenter, Robert. Um, finish the day. Hello, I'm gonna turn off my background, get my screen all shared up, which means you guys get a little preview of what everybody else was talking about at the beginning. <laughs> a little bit just, oh no and it's not gonna work because i oh. just shared it in, incorrectly so just give me another second uh, oh all right there we go oh can everybody hear that yep. yeah yeah all right all right <laughs> no time okay my name is Robert Fredenberg. I am an individualized major with a minor in writing and literature. I grew up in Pacifica, California, the artistic child of two engineers. As a kid, I always wanted to be either a Marvel comic book artist or an animator working for Pixar. When I reached high school, though, I took ceramics and really fell in love with a third dimension. My journey through college took a major detour when in 2014, I had a skateboarding accident that left me in a coma for six weeks and subsequently unable to return to school for a number of years. I spent my time in medical isolation developing skills in a variety of uh, different creative disciplines, which time and again has proven to be deeply advantageous, not only when I was finally made, able to make it back to CCA, but just in my own personal practice as well. Some of these skills, like making comics, I've been practicing all my life, but it wasn't until I arrived at CCA and took the classes in comics that I actually made any. Turns out I'm pretty good, which is nice. Last semester when I was in the model making and prototyping class, I decided to finally try making a guitar for the first time. As a second generation musician, I have plenty of store-bought guitars at my home already. So rather than simply try to copy what I already had, I experimented in finding what the bare minimum amount of construction would be uh, required in order to make something that was actually functional as a guitar. Not only was the eventual bodiless creation interesting, but it also had the unintended benefit of being reversible and thus playable for both right and left-handed musicians. As an ambidextrous person myself, I found this outcome most agreeable. This semester, I added welding to my list of skills. This is why I turned my camera back off. I made this chair that I'm sitting in right now. I designed it to function. Let me get this thing going. I designed it to function both as a place I could sit for long hours while working on my computer, as well as a quick place to lean when I'm doing more craft type stuff. For this, I took inspiration from a bike seat, which fulfills much of the similar function, which is what led to the admittedly odd looking appendage on its front. As odd as it may look though, it works not only as a leaning post, which I'm doing right now, but as a leg rest for the various positions I might find myself while working for the long hours or over the past hour while I'm watching everybody else's presentation. I call it the moose chair now, 
given this keyboard panel I made, which is a thought I never even came remotely close to having while designing it. Um, it's just that when I brought it home and tried working on it while sitting in it, I immediately felt like it needed this. I immediately felt like it needed this. There we go. Um, yeah, and then when looking for somewhere to store it, the right place just felt like behind my head right there. So I added magnets and now it snaps into place. In the future, I imagine adding a cup holder maybe to the side, who knows what else. It's greatest asset. And the thing I love the most about it is its unfinished nature. It even is upholstered more. You can see it at the show. I'm bringing it right after I finish this. Um, is the fact, yeah. It, it's even upholstered differently than when I took the photos for this for this video. It's been upholstered properly, and the armrest has been rebuilt to make it stronger, but also unable to let the keyboard panel snap into place. Um, so if I ever want to use the keyboard pad again, I'll have to do another revision. This is what I mean by unfinished. When I make a thing for myself, my greatest hope is that I can have that I can have for it is that it will never be finished, that it will be capable of evolving so greatly that I'll never have to replace it, only modify it. This chair I'm sitting in now checks that box. It's like sitting on top of raw inspiration all day while working on my art. If ever I'm feeling creatively blocked, I can just change something about this chair to get my imagination working again. Next slide. I have also been very successful in the digital realm during my time here at CCA. In my 3D Animation 2 class, I worked on designing, modeling, rigging, and eventually animating this guy. All with the teacher's blessing, even though this is in no way how the rest of the, how the other students in that class spent their semester. I also made a little home for him in my lighting and materials class, which it appears to appreciate. So, in the last week of the semester last year, my grandmother, whom I'm very, I was very close with, passed. And over the summer, I turned to art and the acquiring of new artistic skills to combat the pain of my grief. This image you see before you, I call Rabel House Cottage. I did this in a single afternoon. The next day, I made this one, which I call the monolith. I decided to set my, for myself this challenge of beginning a scene with an entirely blank canvas in the morning. And by the time I went to sleep that night, posting whatever I had made on social media. This daily render challenge lasted a week, being not only the length of time I could sustain, such as an exhausting regimen, but the amount of time I felt I needed in order to learn what I needed to learn about myself and my artistic values. Day three, the tree house. Day four just so happened to be the 4th of July. This one is called Holiday Cocktails. Day five, I was feeling confident after modeling. By day five, I was feeling confident in the modeling. And I felt it was time to try some more technical experimentation. I had seen a short video on Instagram using Boolean animation several weeks earlier, and had been dying to try it. So I did. Hopefully you can hear all that over me. Um, can somebody give me a thumbs up if that was OK on the audio, or is that like way too loud? Thumbs up? OK. We'll keep going. Similarly on my artistic bucket list was the concept of non-Euclidean spaces. Day six was spent learning that skill. If you're wondering what a non-Euclidean space is, behold. So for my last day, I kind of cheated. I spent two days on it instead of one, but that was just because I got so carried away with what I was doing, I just had to. I spent an entire day trying to work out the best way to rig the train in this scene, including diving into geometry nodes in Blender to try to program as many aspects of the model to animate themselves automatically. I spent, an in, uh, most of my attempts failed but the fact that I found myself lying awake at night trying to envision the most effective formula to calculate wheel spin based on distance per frame traveled told me everything I needed to know about myself and just how much I really love the more 
technical side of 3D art. In the days that followed, I experiment with all sorts of different automatic thing generators, including a ski lift generator that would appear and animate whenever you drew a line, all with variable chair size and distribution along the cable, blah, blah, blah. I got very into it. Eventually, I decided to make myself an automatic world generator for building the foundations of scenes like the one I was, ones I was just showing you. This first one here featured a lake and an ocean layer that you could adjust the height of and roads, roads that would just draw them uh, it would just generate themselves into place when you drew a line across the landscape. Eventually, I realized the world generator itself was the work of art to be showing off. So I started working on an animation of this thing shifting back and forth between different procedurally generated layouts to post on my various social medias. But then I thought, wouldn't it be even cooler if there were a little guy? And every time the world changed, he got tossed around in the middle of it and was bouncing around between scenes and scenes. At this point, though, I had less than a month before summer was over, and it seemed like a pretty unrealistic task. But I was grieving, and as I mentioned, or I was grieving, as I mentioned, and I'm also kind of a crazy person, so I did it. Behold. So what comes next for me? I would like to find, I'd like to find a home, the video game studio, uh, ideally a small company that would benefit from having someone capable of bridging skill sets in different departments as I am, perhaps as a technical artist designing utilities for the developers in house. I'm also very skilled and passionate about building things with my hands, a lifelong carpenter and recent welder. That is just a little bit loud as a recent welder hush now um recent welder as of two semester goes i am a programmer of not only software but hardware as well with that thing that's on the wall behind me so finding a job that occasionally asks for these more traditional craft skills would also satisfy me ultimately i see myself as existing in a space and time where the future is so unknown not only with the state of doom and gloom on the horizon 
but also with the potential for technological innovation and the subsequent creative avenues those innovations will unlock. Recently, we've seen AI-generated imagery take a huge and frankly rather frightening leap forward. There are similar AI-driven revolutions happening all over. All examples of the way we're going to see the creative landscape for a shift tectonically in the next few decades it is amidst that playground that I see myself thriving. My ability to learn and incorporate new skills into my creative processes is my greatest asset. Perhaps the perfect job for me is one that doesn't even exist yet. I'm always open to new possibilities as long as my skills have an opportunity to, put, to be put to use helping others. Before I go, though, I'd like to thank my parents for everything they've done to get me here. My sister for putting up with, with me and all my various shenanigans. I know she's there in the chat. All the teachers that helped me along the way. Joyce, my therapist, and all the IT medical staff who helped put old Humpty Dumpty back together again. Thank you all for your part in getting me here. And to everyone else, for all of you, for listening to me ramble about my art for a few minutes. Thanks for letting me share my art with you. Um, but that's it for now. Thank you. Last uh, thank you. Mm. Uh, maybe you're already thinking about some way my art can be used to help you or someone you know. Don't hesitate to reach out. Those are the last two lines I was skipping. Okay. All right. Ta-da, ta-da. My cat has just shown up. Oh, and now he's just left. He doesn't like oh, to be on good. I'm glad the cat was there for this. Good. Yeah. Wow. Robert, thank you. I want to just, I know we're going to be going over just a few minutes. Thank you all for staying on with us. And let's just move quickly into um, hearing from Asman Taro. Um, Robert, congratulations on a great presentation. And um, I am so jealous of how you pick up these skills and um, and and create these beautiful dynamic spaces. Um, and um, I, you know, was very uh, moved by your work. But the 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 thing that I was most interested in um, was the chair, um, which um, you know was. Please um, ask me all the questions about the chair. <laughs> yeah, I, I I feel like we can just keep talking about the chair in this presentation. I don't know how, in this um, 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 uh, back and forth. I don't know how that useful that would be for you um, in terms of your future uh, goals. But but I do want to point out that the chair is um, really innovative, um, not only for um, its form and style, which, um, you know, reminded me of a high chair, it reminded me of, as you mentioned, the uh, bicycle seat, um, it, it has a, you know, strange animal form. Um, and then it also kind of looks like, um, you know, a, a, a familiar chair, but I am really interested in, in this idea of imperfect design, you know, that evolves as one, you um, uh, lives with an object and, and understands what um, we need it for. Um, you know, design is always um, thought of as um, as um, as the final outcome of um, of some kind of research into how an object fits into our lives. But but to, to think of something that um, um, that gets perfected over uh, a course of a lifetime um, is is really um, it, it's it, yeah, it's really fascinating to me, and I, um, you know, I hope you'll 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 pursue that in some way, um, maybe in your animation. Um, I quickly wanted to you know say about the animation. I um, uh, they are um, I, I'm really interested in the um, the the worlds that you generated, and I had some questions about um, you know the function of these places. Are they are they utopian, you know, alternative visions of a place? Um, uh, you know, what 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 is um, what is the purpose of um, creating these worlds as we um, as we encounter um, dramatic environmental degradation in the world that we live in? Um, right. So, what is what is the function of these environments that you're creating? And then, as someone who works in VR, um, you know, I was thinking it would be really amazing to see these um, in a more in, immersive way than on, um, you know, on a on a two dimensional 
um, a computer screen or um, even as a projection. So have you thought about uh, creating for VR or AR? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the core of all of this is that these are, well, some of them. So you were asking about the, the generative thing, animation that I did. That was born of a utilitarian need similar to the chair in that I had the need to make the, the world generator so that it would take me five minutes to build these scenes in the morning instead of an hour to build the scene and then the rest of the day to put the stuff on top of it, whatever it was. So, and then like I say, then it was like, oh, this is really cool. I should show this off. And the, the stories linking them um, were kind of more, again, kind of utilitarian based around what seemed there were just ideas that i had of different scenes um, that i could do however I, as i said i'm a writing and literature minor i do have a very deep interest in science fiction particularly and and kind of like what you're talking about with the potential that it has for us to either envision better versions of the future where we have solved long long time in the past solved the problems that we face now and they're just like spoken of as like why would we even bother worrying about that or where we haven't solved them and now we're paying the consequences you know the various things that you can ways that you can play with that so um so this animation i'm not sure particularly reflects that but what you're the question you're asking is absolutely reflected in my it's it exists in my mind and it is in my work and and is something that I'm interested in pursuing, as is VR. I'm absolutely, I'm open to that. Uh, as I kind of mentioned, I'm open to whatever the next thing, whoever's, whatever's got. I think we're, we exist very, we're very close to, I mean, kind of, there's a reason why Zuckerberg wants to make his metaverse happen, because we exist right on the cusp of like being able to make our imaginations the world that we live in. Um, and I, I'd like to be around because there's some stuff in my imagination that I would like to share. Um, so, however, the best way to do that is, I'm willing to pursue the tools. Uh, I hope I answered your question. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Hey, hey, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Uh, I was so amazed, you know, the first question I had in my mind was the, you know, how many hours do you work a day, you know, to complete such, <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, how many hours are in a day? everything is so time consuming, I totally know that, and then, oh my god, you have done so much, and um, that's definitely amazing, but also, I was amazed the way you work, and you actually, the, um, uh, clarified uh, when you were uh, responding to as uh, as much so that's that's uh, what I really uh, uh, like, which is about the similarity between your your chair and also this world making uh, um, animation. Because I wa I wanted to find the connection between your animation work with that chair when you're presenting your chair, but when you presented those you know collection of those small worlds. I connected that those two different directions totally close to together. So, um, you know, I love that the world generations, um, that's the fragmentary uh, pieces of stories or the worlds and uh, kind of coming together, almost like the, we are visiting different stars in this um, in a sci-fi um, environment, and then every star has a different environment, or the almost the almost like a, I started seeing like uh, we experience the evolution of the Earth or the planet and um, that which human li uh, being lives on. Um, I, I started kind of thinking about two different things, but the one is the, uh, the I've been reading this book called uh, Sapiens, uh, which is basically the history of the, the Homo sapiens, and then um, which is related to the, uh, the you know, how uh, uh, we impacted the, the earth, the change of the earth. And then so your, your scene had the trees and also the, you know, camping site. So somehow that started, um, uh, uh, reminding me of that uh, book, but also I noticed that the, the character is a person, a guy you said, 
do you think that are uh that's that is that you and uh do you think that this world making practice is almost like a finding the who you are almost like the your um self portrait do you think so i was actually it's interesting you asked this question i was literally just having a thought about this to myself so the reason the primary reason again my art is very utilitarian driven the mm. reason i i make myself the center of these animations is basically for the practical purpose of like it's not going to offend anybody no matter what i do to this character there's nobody that's going to be like hey I like that guy more than <laughs> me because it's me, you know, or like, hey, don't do that to him because it's myself. And and that the thought I was having just earlier today, I think, was was that statement. The things I would do to my character in the animation, I don't think I would ever use myself as an active protagonist. Um. I think I think there's a part of it that like if I need a ragdoll character who's just going to get whipped around and things are going to happen to this and it's, you know, maybe it's good, but it's probably going to be bad because, you know, it's in an animation and we're just going to throw terrible things at it. I'm going to use myself again so that I'm not offending anybody with anything, what I might happen to do to myself. Mm. Little cartoon me can take it. Um, but I don't think I, like I say, I don't think I would use myself as a, as an active protagonist who actively did things because that more suggests, I mean, that's that's more of now we're getting into like fantasy fulfillment, basically. Mm -hmm. When I hear mm -hmm. me and right. there's all the cool stuff, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make this perfect world that fits just so that I, as the protagonist, could could do exactly the things I yeah, and no, that's that's not what I'm interested in. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Me as a protagonist is a character that'll pop up if like if I just need to drag and drop some some bloop. Um you know yeah, yeah. But otherwise but otherwise i have no problem writing characters um i have a whole you know i've worked on a couple of stories in mm -hmm. my more um writing side of things and i have developed whole casts and several wow. within several stories um all of course shades of myself as all writers characters are you know mm -hmm. um, but and also i'm looking forward to seeing like how you start incorporating the physical physical making practice of the the objects ch chairs and then all those things that you have in uh, you know in the background you know and um yeah how you know i think the first it makes sense that you work for a video gaming company or something but they definitely i'm interested in seeing you started integrating those things into this uh digital world making maybe i don't know creating the device or installation where we can experience your digital world etc so you know there's so there's so much possibility there so uh, i'm looking forward to seeing you know what you're going to work on in the future yeah. Me too. thank you so much <laughs> thank you You know, I'd just add that um, not only is the, the den that you're living in kind of just kind of creates also a sense of adventure, <laughs> you know, um, the man cave, but I, I just say that, you know, it's been really wonderful to get to know your work over time and, you know, the chair and the kind, the chair is a world unto itself, right? And there's something about your interest in science fiction and the kind of social critique that I see also running through your work that you can also, I think, really begin to, through your writing skills, through your, you know, your, your conversational skills, begin to really hone those even deeper, you know, because that white guy on that planet alone, you know, who's, you know, moving fast through, um, through these sort of time increments of a, of a world that's constantly changing is, is also very much a narrative of our time, right? And so I, I think, and, um, you know, the ecological critique as well. So I think just keep honing those kinds of really complex um, theoretical philosophical issues into your work as well. I, I, I always really love that you brought the grief into your work you know, and the mm. process that you went through, you know, to um, work through that relationship and that loss through an intensive making energy is phenomenal. 
Well, I think we could go on talking about all these students' work, you know, uh, much longer than we have today. And I, I want to just take a few minutes to thank everyone for coming and, um, and to thank these four artists who have really shared with us many of the challenges that they've gone through in their life and over the last four years at CCA through the pandemic. I, I feel like it's a, an incredible. Um, tribute really to what you've been able to accomplish and to move through how much you've given to us as an audience today. Um, can't wait to see your work in person tomorrow. That's going to be also really fantastic. Um, so I just, I just want you to know it's been really an honor to work with all of you over this semester. What else can we say? Does anyone have any last thing I want to say before we end for the day? Artists or respondents or audience? Thanks for all your help getting prepared for this, Suzanne. Yeah. Thank you welcome. specifically. <laughs> My pleasure. Yeah, I just wanted to thank the students um, particularly for sharing their work um, in, in such a uh, precise and thoughtful way. Uh, really lovely. And also, yeah, I really uh, admire you all that, uh, you know, you did this presentation and you also you installed your exhibition at Somart and then, yeah, this is the uh, the beginning of artist life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, congratulations uh, to be in, in the real ground. <laughs> Hopefully we're all so busy after school, <laughs> after this at school. You will be. <laughs> you will be. Yeah. All right. Asma and Tara, thank you for being here. It's fantastic. And um, okay, see you all soon. Take good care. Thank you.